Good morning folks, welcome to the vlog. Today I think is Wednesday, I'm losing track of time again. I've come up with a genius idea for cleaning the tank when, uh, when we're not here. So we fill it up with caustic and everything else after it's had like a hot rinse at the end of a brew day and then I've got to set the HLT to come on at about 4 o'clock in the morning so we've got hot water when we get here I've also been setting the recirc pump up as well with the spray ball on with 2% caustic solution in there and when we come in well she's just uh, clean and shiny inside, look at that so all we have to do now is just rinse it out put some paracetic acid in there recirculate that through the paraflow chiller so that the uh, chiller is sanitized that's also had the acid treatment uh, the caustic treatment and we can do that whilst we're mashing in so we've basically got an hour or 45 minutes before we're going to need the boil kettle after we've mashed in so it saves a lot of time on the brew day this method so I've just got to take a few fittings off there transport them onto there and we're ready for brew day number two. I'm gonna order some DWB. <laughs> We're just about to weigh out some AMS liquor treatment for the uh, for the mash. I've bought these handy little pumps, <clears throat> excuse me, moi, that have this long tail and they fit in the 25 litre chemical drums that are supplied by most brewery suppliers. So I'm forever trying to pick these heavy drums up and weigh out specific amounts of ingredients or chemicals or cleaners whereas this is now going to make my life a lot easier so they come in 30 mil metered doses and we use 260 mil for the AMS for our particular recipe today so that's quite easy to do by just priming the pump and going 30, 60, 90, 120, 50, 180, 210, what do we want? 260, 210, 240, and we've got 270, so we're 10 mil over, or units. Well that's come out at 290, so I wonder if I teared the container. <clears throat> Probably not. Let's tear that. Yeah, 290, so we're a little bit over. We'll pour it back in. So one pump too much, folks. Certainly a lot easier though. There we go, so that's 222. 255, that's close enough for me. It's close enough for the girls I go out with. There we go, I'll see if I can find a link and pop it in the description for anybody who wants to buy these. There are five or each. So I hope you can hear me, folks, over the raucous racket of the pumps. I want to talk. I want to throw what I'm talking about on the floor. So I want to talk about yeast. So for our vacant gesture and a lot of the pale ales that I make, I generally stick to USO5 yeast, which is from uh, Safael, Fermentis, Safael USO5, and this yeast has stamina good stead 
for many years now. It's my go-to yeast, it's clean, it's crisp, there's very little residual flavour left behind with it. Um, I've recently come across this yeast by AEB. This is their Thermo Ale AY4, which is sold by Brewer Select at the moment, and it is meant to be a rival to US05. I'm pretty sure that Nice Niche Solutions do a brand of AEB yeast as well, but they've had theirs renamed to correlate to the 05, the US05, so they call theirs AY4 for the SO4 and AY5 for I think it's AY, it could be a different prefix. AY5 for the SO5 uh, copy. But Brewer Select haven't been quite as obvious as that, so uh, I used this last week. The beer that I tasted that came out of the tanks the other day when Jack and I were casking up tasted fantastic. So it's looking like I'm going to make the switch to this because it is half the price just about of uh, US05. I haven't tried the 04 equivalent yet. I very rarely use 04 in the brewery anyway. If I want to use an English style ale yeast then I'll go for Nottingham. And I'm told that AEB also do a Nottingham substitute as well. So if you jump onto Brewer Select or Niche Solutions website, you'll see their range of cheaper, I wouldn't call, but could call them budget yeasts, but the cheaper yeasts that are available on the market. These are around 26 quid for 500 grams, and these are closer to 50. So it gives you an idea of the kind of saving that you're going to make on these yeasts, particularly if you're dry pitching every time, which I do, and they take at least half, half a bag, if not more, per batch of beer. Right, we've got the fermenter rinsed and we are boiling, so I'm just about to add the first charge of Challenger Hot, which actually smells fantastic, you know. A very underrated hot is Challenger, UK heritage as well. So we're just going to pop this in. There we go. A little bit of anti foam just to keep her under control. Give her a bit of a mix. So I missed the belt a little bit with this one as well. We did actually have a boil over while I was down here rinsing out the FE2 that it's going to be going into. So I had to shoot down really, come on, come on, really where are the quickly to knock it down to 40% on the PID and then hose all of the sugars off the outside of the tank. If you do have a boil over, just drain it, you spray it all off as quick as you can, and then you don't have the issues of a sticky mess afterwards. It's all on the floor now and rinsed away, and what we literally lost a couple of litres, not the end of the world. So now I have to just mix up some peracetic acid, some Persid 15, pop it into that tank, let that recirculate for literally 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes I leave it for an hour, just depending on how grubby I think the tank is or has been and then just before we knock out we'll get rid of that parasitic and we'll fill it up with beer and then that parasitic acid here's yesterday's I just use that for neutralizing any spills of caustic or rinsing the tips of any hose pipes or anything like that that'll just sit there for the next day to act as just like a, a sanitation dip if you like and also while I was waiting for the uh, the boil to come up to temperature, I made this little shelf to sit on top of this little uh, tissue dispenser to store al alufoil, cling film, all that kind of stuff. And we'll probably stick, I don't know, something up here to put spare cleaning products, I don't know. We shall see, towels, something like that. Handy little... Uh, and a little piece of kit. Took me two minutes to make. Well, here we go, folks. Jack has very kindly taken this flower bed that we built last week, week before, 
And he's raked it out level for me so I can get these cascade hops in that was sent to me by Phil. Excellent news folks because they want to be in the ground. They're already growing like wildfire in the bag. So let's have a look what we've got. There we go. One, two, three, that's a good one. Four, five, six, seven healthy rhizomes. This one's particularly healthy, look at that. So let's get this in the ground because these guys are gonna want to uh, run away up this wall. And yes, it is one hell of a wall. So we've got the hops in, seven rhizomes along the back edge. I predict within a week we're going to start to see some action. Just get them watered in, give them a good start and also get any muck off of this wall. put it in the back of the car I've got a little shelf to put next to the boiler at home to put all the cereals and stuff I think I talked about this the other day so I'm just going to put some caustic in here so that's ready to come on and recirculate and clean tomorrow morning when the HLT comes on and we're going to brew the jaded pioneer tomorrow the first time since I left IVB uh, and then I've also got to just pop a little bit of yeast into that fermenter then we'll go home and do this uh, we'll do this shelf I'll tell you what I've also done today as well, which I've not done for a heck of a long freaking time, and that is this. I've got a packet of USO5 yeast and some mosaic hops vac packed. Because somebody asked me the other day about making one of these. Duty free folks, duty free. So fresh walk kit, you can make a gallon of your very own vacant gesture at home. So I've made that for my mate Liam, he's going to ferment that at home uh, over the next week or two. So hopefully they'll bring us a sample in to see how it turned out. I'm very excited because if this works, I might start selling these through the pub for people that want to brew our beers at home which is uh, something I wanted to do in the past, but never got round to it. The only issue is finding a fair priced source for the HDP containers that we've put them in. I probably can't know. All is calm in the brewery. Everything is off, ready for tomorrow. Everything's at temperature, hence the glycol chill are not kicking in. So let's go home and put this freaking cereal storage shelf up. Woo, rock and fucking roll, baby. <laughs> right. 
No fear, the hole is deep enough. There we go. Just remains for me to clean up and oh, put a little bit of cereal in there, I guess. And of course, I know you just saw me do this at work, but this is what I've got this little bit for mainly section files and stuff friggin right there we go folks so uh, just remains for me now to come out here where it appears to be just starting to rain I'm gonna pour myself another stout that's right because it was stoutly delicious last night and I'll edit the vlog for your leisure and pleasure and we will see you on tomorrow's check it out then. cheers